Good morning, everybody. Today's topic on Coffee and Questions is I had a friend send me a photo of something he found on the web, and he replicated it, making himself a coffee table. And I thought, hey, this is not a complicated project. It's something that would be a nice quick tip video to throw up. So I'm going to go ahead and change the picture, and we're going to talk about how easy it can be to make something very decorative. Give me one sec, and we'll change it up, and I'll show you a picture. Okay, let's take a closer look at this. Now, this is made out of simple wrought iron. Now, a friend of mine that duplicated this, I'll explain to you what he did and how he did it. He went out and he went to one of these thrift stores, like I keep saying, and he found a bunch of mismatched bed frame rails, and they sold them to him for next to nothing. That's one way to do it, or you can go out and buy one and a half inch or whatever you want, angle iron from your steel supplier. They usually sell it in 20 foot lengths. Some of them will cut it for free to 10 foot one time, and then they, there's a cut charge. You want to cut it, get it home. That's the point here. You got the angle iron. So you go ahead and you don't have to do any fancy joints on this because a lot of it's going to be hidden by the wood once you drop it in. So what he did here, he brought it home, he was telling me, and he went ahead and he welded up the frames, the top, the bottom. Then he turned around and he did the verticals. Then you can see these gussets on the side. These are just triangular pieces of steel he cut. I asked him how he did it. All he used was his four and a half inch angle grinder with a cutoff wheel, and he clamped another piece of wrought iron across it after he drew the triangles to make like a straight edge. Then he just cut right along it. When he had them all cut up, he was telling me he put them together, clamped them in a vise, then he used his four and a half inch angle grinder, he changed over to an abrasive flap disc, and he used 80 grit, and he cleaned up all the edges, got all the burrs and everything off of them, and made them nice and neat looking. So those are the gussets. Now he's got, let's see, two, four, six, eight. So he's got eight of them up here on the top. Now he didn't put the rivets in them. You can if you want. You can go out and get bolts, like round head bolts from out at Lowe's or Home Depot. You can drill holes. You can put them in there, weld them, secure them with a nut, however you want to do it, and you'll get the same look. These are inexpensive materials to make this. Now, on the top, what he did is similar to this. He went ahead and he got pine boards. And again, like I've said in previous videos, make sure you pull them off the rack, set them on edge in front of you, and look down them. Try to get the straightest pieces of lumber that you can. It's going to take you some time in sorting through lumber or, you know, these pine boards to get enough of them, you know, that they're nice level. They're not cupped. You know, they're not warped or anything like that. Or you can use thicker ones. You can use 2x6s, 2x8s, 2x12s, you know, whatever you want to make that top and that bottom shelving. The harder part's going to be the metal pulleys, of course, that he used for wheels on the bottom. But those brackets right there that hold those pulleys to the bottom of the table base, all he did was use two inch wide, I think he told me, or whatever you want. You can get two and a quarter, whatever. And he made those U's. And then he drilled holes where a bolt would go through and then through the wheel to the other side. And he put a nut on them. This is a simple project in one way, but you have to assemble the materials. I think that, you know, a little bit of web search, you'll find these pulleys. They're, they're probably out there. Do an eBay search, Craigslist, things like that. You can get four identical pulleys and now you've got those table you know those legs on here and i thought this was a really neat thing now he did tell me he used a level as he built these and he used a, a small square that way he keeps everything in perfect alignment and everything stays perfectly level that's your quick tip of the day you might want to think about doing this it's a nice little decorative touch you can stain the wood however you want it. You can finish it however you want it. You can put semi-gloss, gloss finish over the top of it if you want something shiny. There's a multitude of ways to stain and dye and treat the wood before you put that finish on. You know, you just search around or drop me a comment. We can come up with some suggestions for you. There's a lot of stuff out at Lowe's and Home Depot. Minwax makes a whole bunch of different kinds of stains. You can have a lot of fun and you can make this really look like something. Now this one... In the photo, he didn't paint that railing or anything yet. A friend of mine, what he did with his is they make a textured paint. Uh, Rust-Oleum makes it. And it comes in different colors, you know, browns and all different kinds of colors. And he used a textured paint because it's a little bit more forgiving, you know, if you still have defects or splatter in the metal or something. But try to clean up your metal and everything else. But 
the textured look, um, I've used it on wood projects and I've used it on a lot of other you know, metal projects when I do my horseshoe men or I do my barbecue guys. I would encourage you to look around, figure out how you want to do it, design it yourself and have some fun. It's a quick tip on a way to make a nice decorative antique looking table. Hope you folks click subscribe and stay with me and I'll talk to you on the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.